Hi, my name is Lucy, and I'm a web design and development instructor at IEDT. Today, I'm going to explain to you the purpose and process of developing a wireframe, as well as the tools you need to create one. Before we get started, let me explain to you what exactly a wireframe is. A wireframe is basically a blueprint for the look of the pages in the website. We use wireframes to plan a layout of a page, and later on, we use them as a basis for creating mockups. Make sure you set aside ample time to do research before you start developing your wireframes. Be sure to get feedback on your drafts. Having another set of eyes can help identify areas that need to be revised. Keep in mind, the duration of the process will depend on the complexity of the website. So the next phase in developing your website is to create a wireframe. A wireframe is basically a bare bones representation of what your site will look like. Um, and basically it's, it's a very s simple way to chop up the real estate so you know where to put everything. Um, in this example, my layout is 1024 by 760 pixels and I'm working within a 960 by 700 pixel area. I have an area for my header, the content, the sidebar, and the footer, and the wrapper that's gonna hold everything together. And I don't have anything specific in there yet. Again, I'm just determining where I wanna put things. Another very important benefit for making a wireframe is because of these measurements. You wanna use these measurements when you're creating the CSS so that you know uh, you know, the attributes of the uh, container tags. Um, so this is my home page design. And when I created this, I used a grid. And a grid is, is a good way to help you determine balance for your content. This example has a 12 column grid. And you don't have to follow it literally. Again, it's just a guideline for you to determine balance of your content. How to, Use the, real, use the real estate the most wisely. And this is my design for the interior page. I'm gonna have the header div again and the footer. The content area is gonna be a little bit different. I have some areas for some photos that are all the same size. And then a side area with another photo and some more text. Um, rule of thumb, you should probably make about five designs for the uh, the home page and also the interior pages, just so you have more of a variety to choose from. Maybe you can mix and match. Also, you should make different wireframes for the pages that will have different functionality with the content. For example, a blog page will not look the same as a page where you're picking out items to shop for. Again, this, uh, this wireframe also had a grid, kind of help out with the balance. It didn't follow it literally, it did it help me uh, build up my site anyway. Um, and anyway, once you're happy with the design of your wireframe, then you can move on to making a mock-up, and that's what we will discuss in our next video. When you feel that the wireframes encompass all the features and pages you need at the moment, you can move on to the next phase. Thanks for watching this video on how to develop a wireframe. Be sure to check out my next video for how to create mock-ups.